Welcome to our second tutorial on automation. In our previous tutorial, we learned what automation means, how to read and write automation to audio tracks using the mixer, and what the various automation modes mean. You can also create automation by drawing it right in the project window. Drawing automation this way can be more convenient when you need to fine tune your material or if you want to make adjustments that apply to the whole track without playing back the whole track. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create custom automation in the project window. Let's begin by selecting the track we want to automate. Actually, let's organize the rest of our space a little bit so I can see more of the track that I'm going to be writing automation to. Now click the Show Hide Automation button at the far left corner of the track. You might need to hover your mouse over the far left bottom area until you see the button appear, as it's only shown when you need it. We click and the first automation subtrack is revealed. Let's resize it a little bit so it fits in my window. You can have many automation subtracks per track, one for each parameter that you want to automate, for example, volume, pan, send level, and more. Let's begin by enabling the read button for this subtrack. Now we'll select the parameter we want to automate from the parameter fields drop down menu. If the parameter we want to automate doesn't appear here, we can select more. A dialog box will open offering additional possible selections for this type of track. We choose the one we want and click OK to get back to the subtrack. I'm going to write volume automation for this track. Now this parameter is displayed in the parameter display field so that I can easily tell at a glance what this automation subtrack is for and to distinguish it from any others that I create down the line. On the automation subtrack, I see the waveforms for my stereo signal. They're grayed out. That's to let me know visually that any adjustments I make in the automation won't actually affect the original waveforms i.e. there's no change to the original signal itself as it appears in the track. This line here is the graphical representation of our automation. Currently I don't have any automation for this parameter so I do see a long horizontal line. Once I write some automation it'll be reflected graphically on this line. Click on the output level measurement to open a slider where we can adjust the volume. This lets you see which way the slider's moving. When we move it up, it gets red, and when we move it down, it goes blue. As you can see, the 0 dB point is the default and lies right above the stereo signal. At any point in the automation timeline, you can see what your current level is by checking the number that's listed here in the output level measurement. If I drag the slider all the way down, the line moves all the way to the bottom too. This effectively mutes my track. The output level measures zero. I can also right click on this field and type in the value that I want to enter. Now the output is boosted by two, entered manually. If I control click on this level measurement, it'll return to zero. You need to disable read and write for this to work. Let's zoom in a little bit. Generally, when you're drawing custom automation this way, you want to do it pretty close unless you're applying automation to the whole song, let's say to a broad panning change or something like that. Let's read and write enable and let's select the draw tool. That's this pencil icon. It becomes blue showing that it's active. My cursor changes to a pencil icon. We use the draw tool to add points on the line where we want to make any changes to the automation. In principle, adding automation works like this. Click anywhere on the automation line to insert a point. If you click and drag, you'll insert multiple points. This is how you can create, for example, a fade ramp or any other custom shape. You can use the object selector to move points both horizontally along your timeline or vertically to change the output. You can select more than one point with a shift select or by drawing a rectangle around it and left clicking and dragging. Then you can drag the entire automation curve up or down, right or left. Sometimes with the draw tool you end up adding too many points by accident if you're left clicking and dragging. 
So adding points with the object selector may be more convenient if you don't need to create a custom shape. Just click on the line to add points and then drag them up and down left and right as necessary. When you select an automation point, this pop-up here displays my current cursor position using the primary time display. I've got it in bars and beats, as well as the output level on the end, bar 2, beat 1, etc. Minus 4.47 is my current volume output level. To replace existing automation, you can simply draw right over it. As you see, the first and last point automatically connect to the automation that came before and after. To remove an automation point, select it and press delete or backspace on your keyboard. You can also use the eraser tool to quickly remove a group of points, draw a rectangle around them with the object selector and then press delete. You can also use the backspace key on your keyboard. Let's restore our automation to zero. You can also add automation using the line tool. Just click on the automation line where you want the shape to start, then release your mouse where you want it to end. You can still make adjustments with the object selector. Let's delete those points. You can also use one of the line shapes from the drop down menu in the line tool. Just left click on the arrow to see these parabola, sine, triangle, or square. These line tools let you draw more consistent curves than you can do manually with the draw tool. The parabola or sine curves would be good shapes for fades. Just click on the automation line where you want the shape to start and let go of the mouse where you want it to end. If you want to invert the parabola or sine curve, use the control key while you're drawing. See how the icon changes shape? And that's a command on the Macintosh. Let's check out the sine curve. Oops. Undo, undo. Good thing for Control Z. We'll be a little more careful deleting these points. We'll just do them one at a time. The triangle tool is useful for creating, let's say, rhythm at regular intervals. Or for creating panning automation. If you enable snap mode, you can be guided to where your automation points will be dropped. This is pretty helpful for creating a rhythm. It lets you do it right on time. The square shape is also good for this. Rhythms and panning. To automate another parameter, let's say mute, just select it from the parameter drop down menu. A blank automation subtrack opens up. Now we can draw in our mute automation. If we hold down and drag, we can repeat at regular intervals dictated by the snap grid. The original automation line showed the default mute setting. What I've created is an automation that mutes every half bar using the square shape. But what happened to our volume automation subtrack? See how it has an asterisk next to it? That means the track already has automation for this parameter. The asterisks help us see at a glance which parameters we've already automated. In my case, I've only already automated the volume. We can simply switch by selecting it, and the volume automation subtrack appears. To see all the automation subtracks you've created, select the track you're working on, right click, then choose Show Used Automation. Both of the automation tracks I created are now visible along with the settings that I created for each one. To hide the automation, simply right click and select Hide. After you've drawn automation directly into the project window, you don't necessarily need to edit it here. You can also edit it in the mixer window while it's playing. F3 to open our mixer. Simply play and make your changes on the volume faders as you did previously. Let's close the mixer. To delete an automation subtract, just select it, right click, remove selected tracks. 
Be sure you haven't also got your audio track selected or you'll delete that too. And let's undo our last delete with a control Z. By the way, see how if I move my event, the automation follows along with it? That's because I've got the Automation Follows Events option checked in the Preferences menu. Go to File or Cubase on your Mac and select Preferences, then choose the Editing branch from the tree. Check Automation Follows Events. Click OK when you're done to exit the Preferences menu. Let's try this out on my piece. Let me remove this automation track. On my strings track, there's a few notes that stick out near the beginning. The problem starts around bar 6 and finishes around bar 10. What I'll do first is set my locators. Now I'll set up my screen for optimal display. We'll zoom to the locators. Shrink the track list a little bit to give me more room. Zoom the locators again. And let's close the transport panel too. Activate cycle mode. Let's drag this out a bit so I can see my read and write buttons. And here's our automation track. Let's choose the volume parameter. We'll close the inspector to give us even a little more room. Readjust the zoom. Automation read and write are both enabled. Let's position our cursor and let's have a listen. I'm going to insert some points where I hear note changes. Those will be potential places for me to make adjustments. Now on my next lap around, I'm going to drag the points up and down. And I can keep cycling through, adjusting, until I'm satisfied that the strings don't jump out too much. They did get increasingly loud at one point here. Let me just drag these points that point I don't need I'll delete oops I deleted my whole track undo okay and then raise it up a bit near the end of that loop let's have a listen and I can continue making adjustments in real time and let's stop our playback And that's just the beginning of what automation can do for you. You can automate pan controls, any effects, MIDI controls, VST instrument parameters, and more. This concludes our second tutorial on automation. Remember, don't forget to lock your automation when you're done and to save your work.